Well, tonight we're very pleased to introduce Trinetti Brown, speaking for the very first time with the Portland Psychedelic Society. Um, I have a feeling it won't be her, her first and last. Um, she is an incredible singer and songwriter, but honestly is so, so much more than just a musician. Um, her works takes her into dance, writing, and she is also a business owner. Um, I believe her artwork extends into the business realm as well. She is a CEO of Soulful Resonance, which is the mother tree organization for regener regenerative arts and education. And uh, she's also a personal friend of mine. So welcome, Trinetti. Hello, thanks for having me, everybody. I'm excited to be here and share with you all today. Absolutely. I know. I feel like we've had so many brilliant conversations with you sort of leading up to this moment um, with, with your work. Like one of the things about your art is this interconnectedness between all the mediums that you work with and the sort of core foundation of language being like a really key component of it. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like the, your psychedelic use has kind of opened up those channels for you to be able to kind of connect those different mediums? I would say yes and no at the same time. I've always been an explorer of many realms of art. Like I've just never been the type of person to listen when someone was like, you can only do, you have to pick one thing that never resonated with me. I'm just like, yeah, no. And I think that that really comes from my foundation being so strong in dance by being um, such an embodied artist and having such a spiritual connection with the energy of the dance, it becomes very clear that every single form of art that you do is it just a variation of the dance because it all takes our body. And so for me, it was never like looking at the mediums as completely like individual, but like, how can I dance through paint? Or how can I choreograph a space by creating an event that in which the energy of people will flow through the space in a certain way and it'll produce a certain type of a feeling and experience that they get to receive by that and that trickled out and rippled into all of my other forms of art which there has been many that I've explored um, I would say that psychedelic usage specifically mushrooms really working with the mushroom spirit really came in when it came to unlocking the gates of my voice and developing my ability to channel song. I know we told, when, we, when we talked last, you mentioned it almost as being a cosmic microphone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, that's how I feel. I feel like the mushroom is very powerful because it has been with us for so long as a co, co like a co spire to our evolution we like as just grows from the earth whole and complete and as soon as we felt spirit call us to that it's been aiding us on our evolutionary curve and when i'm in that space it feels to me like going to church and like phoning home to a deeper aspect of my soul and what messages my soul has for me and what messages the earth has for me it's like way easier for that to come through and then of course when it comes through in that space then it's like capturing that energy and integrating it into like your non like lucid reality to like bring that through so it becomes very seamless over time when you when you dose with with mushrooms specifically to create do you have a like a particular dosage that you're working with or like a particular ritual that you do that kind of puts you puts you in a place where you can you can use them like actually as a tool like yeah it's funny you. it's funny because everyone thinks I'm like this like freaking super ritualistic like person like, everyone thinks I'm over here like drawing circles and like doing all this shit I'm not like that um, I'm very like practical I pray like prayer is a very for me very practical way to be completely connected it's the least complicated way to be very powerful and connected and i like that because i don't like my life to be complicated so uh, for me with with mushrooms and creation it really just depends on how i'm feeling and what i'm going in for 
it's like a lot of times I actually use that energy more for a reset. So with a higher dosage of anything over like three grams, that's more of like, I'm probably not going to go into the studio with that. I'm going to just chill and receive and like sing and be inside of the song and maybe draw and like journal and like process in that space. And then anything under that, that's to me like a mini dose and I can just do like my life, <laughs> like whatever I had going on that day, be it like going to the studio or just doing things. What like, do you mean by, by mini dose exactly? Mini dose to me is like between um, under three grams. And this also is like totally subject to the strain that you're working with because they like all, all potent in different ways but under that but over like the micro dose of like what is it like 0.2 is like a micro dose so more than that less than three grams I would say is a mini dose and it really just depends on like the person everyone has different sensitivity levels and it depends on like the variety of mushrooms. Yeah, that it is. Sure. I mean, I mean, I feel like everyone's different. I'm, I'm more curious about like you personally. You yeah, know, well, feel like you know, yeah. you're telling people. For me, it's it's, it's yeah. that that's the ratio for me. It's like between like, anything over a microdose to under like an eighth. Because like once you start to get up into the eighth and above, to me that's like a full journey. Like when I'm doing that, I'm like going to church. I'm setting aside my day to go like super super deep yeah, that and was like holding me on my ass hard <laughs> like, I don't think I could function like, at all like I mean I, I mean I'm sure I would have an amazing experience but in terms of any kind of like journaling I don't know if I would be journaling, like in that in that yeah, I have like a wild kind of I'm like wildly grounded like um I had this period of time on my like psychedelic introspection journey it actually like it was like right we didn't even talk about this yet. It's funny this is coming up because we didn't even talk about this. Um, but I was like exploring DMT and everyone would blast like off. Like that was like the concept that everyone kept saying. And it, for me, it felt like blasting in. Like I was like, I'm not leaving my body. I'm just going into like a deeper corridor of my body. And so I had this like period of time where I would practice merging the realms. So I would take in the DMT to a, a very deep level where you start to feel that like shift in dimension happening and like the your sound space changes and everything like that. And instead of like closing my eyes and going somewhere else, I will pull all my energy into my vessel and pull that realm into my realm. And it would change um, the environment, but I would still be fully rooted and grounded in the environment, like could get up and move around and like dance and play oh, and by the river. Interesting. Because when you're saying that to me now, it's, it's funny because like when you're saying that to me on how it almost borderline sounds like, like you're, like, I don't, I don't want to, like, resisting that, like, full deepness, you know, like, you're, like, trying to, like, and resist is probably the wrong word, but trying to stay, like, present or trying to stay, like, here in this reality as opposed to, like, you know, going yeah. in. What that does is it makes you a stronger conduit. And for me, like, I've always been very clear, or at least my internal guidance has always been very clear that, like, my purpose in this incarnation is not to escape my vessel or escape anything about this incarnation, but to be a bridge for those higher dimensional energies to reach this. So for me, like my whole approach to psychedelics has always been more of like a scientist of like not using that to escape from anything, not using it as like, um, this is like gonna, do something that I can't do myself but like this is a mirror for me of like my potential and I'm going to use it to track my progress of being an embodiment of those high level frequencies so for me it's like I can go out like I'm lucid all the time I've done I can biolocate and like astral travel and I remember my dream work and like all sorts of stuff so it's not about that for me it was like the inquiry of and I had already done that. That wasn't like, that was the first time that I had done DMT and like, oh, like I was like resisting it. It's like, I'd already done that, gone to those interdimensional spaces and felt that. And like, I got the 
the download that I was also capable of like bridging. And I used that to get stronger in my energy work. And now like for me, I don't like, I know how to be a conduit, a vessel for God's light to come through me. And that has become really my my greatest gift that's the space that i hold in my music that's the space that i hold for my clients it's that whew, dropping all of those frequencies into the vessel and it literally feels like a like a, a cylinder of light and vibration and electricity powering through you and then you're just cycling it or i'm just cycling it into the space around me it's like a very deep art form of listening oh that's really cool that's really, really interesting. It almost sounds like it's like when you're saying that, like the roots of a tree, like, you know, yeah. your, your work are the branches, but the roots listening and, and, and speaking are kind of two halves of the same, same whole. Did you, did anything come out of that DMT, like specific, like pieces of art or, um, or music come out of those? I think it's more informed. Um, I'm very intricate with when it comes to geometry and my movement. And I think that like through actually like across the board, because for me, my internal soul space is very clear. Like it is, I know who I am that, and it just is the same space. So regardless of what psychedelic I'm under the influence of, I go into my inner temple and that's just like, and what it is, is these beautiful, um, almost like Moroccan mosaic forms moving but it's very much these gigantic sacred bodies moving through space holding these different forms through space shifting the energy of my internal space for me to see and receive different things and so especially in when I was practicing with DMT I met a lot of internal guides that taught me very specific um movement sequences that flowed energy and what I would do was take that and embody that into my choreography or into my classes that I was teaching I would like use those codes that I was receiving and share them in some form so it was like second step like wow that's cool did you tell people they were coming out of out of a DMT space or coming out of like a more like a divine sort of transmission of some kind like was that something that you shared with your your students or your clients or yeah we share it in workshops and stuff like when I was teaching um liquid lotus dance but not necessarily extremely openly um, unless I felt the vibe that people were with that because you know that people haven't been able to really openly speak about this until like what this year <laughs> so no <laughs> like only if I knew somebody was with it but I wasn't like carrying that and like yeah because like you can't you couldn't then people were still in that like mentality of like oh my gosh like it's stigmatized it's drugs it's not oh. I, know. Like, <laughs> I know we were talking a little bit about like stigma earlier or we had a little like message back and forth I feel like there is so much that still like needs to happen and um I, I don't know definitely art it's such a powerful like tool for educating and mm -hmm. through music and through what you're putting out into the world i i do feel like you're kind of educating people about sort of a different way of being mm -hmm. like, illustrating sort of a different option i you know like some of the one one thing i did want to kind of get into that i felt was really fascinating that you brought up uh, the last time we talked was kind of the the difference that you see between LSD and mushrooms and I'm I'm kind of I feel like on a different end of the spectrum from yeah. <laughs> in terms of like um those two different substances could you maybe describe a little bit about some of your LSD experiences maybe the first time you tried it um sure. what work you have created like using LSD as a tool okay yeah so for me, the mushrooms is more of a gateway to the soul. <laughs> like, this is just my opinion. Like, I don't feel that when I'm in LSD space, that deep organic connection to soul, to the earth, to the like greater like God mind. I don't feel that 
connection on LSD. What I do feel is like this hyper awareness, this precision of and like analytic that unlocks and it's because it like regardless of what how it is a great tool for growing and expanding your cerebral capacity but it was created by men and it has that energy in it even if you compare the way that like the just the edges the nature the edges of space the way they show up like I, I mentioned to you that I have this kind of like synesthesia if you will spiritual synesthesia where I see these bodies emerging that are holding the space so when I'm in a um, mushroom space it's very organic they're very like of the earth of the essence of spirit in this very kind of more feminine way or just organic I can't, don't know another word to say but with LSD it's this masculine this like deep like almost see like the thinker everywhere <laughs> like, just this like deep masculine energy which is beautiful because because it's created in a lab by um, by man specifically probably the mind white man actually, actually that's totally true it holds this gate open for understanding um the man-made world in this really interesting way seeing through the illusions and the codes of uh mass media even um understanding technology and programs and working with software you'll see a lot of people who are computer programmers or digital visual artists or musicians even having like a really like strong relationship it makes total sense to me Francis that you have a strong relationship with it as a photographer these digital arts these precision based arts there's an affinity for learning and developing mastery in those realms that I find to be available in that acid realm, that LSD realm that is just not there in the mushroom room. It's very different. Like I wouldn't go into LSD looking to go deeper with God, <laughs> but I also wouldn't go into the mushroom spirit looking okay. to learn my new digital audio workstation, you know? Oh, for real. It's, it's, it's really, I, I just, I love the way you phrase that. I love the way you kind of like broke that down. I've, I've never heard anyone describe, describe LSD in that way. Um, but I, I've, I've heard people talk about mushrooms as being this organic, feminine, like natural kind of experience. And you know, the fact that LSD is so popular in Silicon Valley right now, like it's the hot shit to do is micro LSD and go to work. Yeah. I'd have to say, like, um, I feel you on the difference between LSD versus mushrooms. I feel like, um, you know, as an artist, like, what do I want? Out of, like, I feel like all psychedelics are a medium, right? So you're going to pull from that medium what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Like, do I want to accomplish, like, systems? Do I want to accomplish, like, an understanding in a certain way? And mushrooms are definitely more grounded in... Um, a more uh, holistic and mm -hmm. organic uh, spiritual connection. And what I tap into is more ancestral. Mm -hmm. It's like the diving inside, right? In a different mm -hmm. way, it's like my cosmic inside. And um, I do, I tend to favor, I feel like mushrooms versus LSD. I feel like LSD is kind of like an adventure on its own. And I do learn a lot about um you know, myself within LSD and in what I want to get creatively, but it's more like logical rather yeah. than, um, you know, uh, spiritual. And I feel like create, I want to say creative and spiritual in one, right? Mm -hmm. Because I feel like they are kind of the same thing. They're sacred. And because it is like really like women are creators. We're all creators. The existence is creation. Um, but within LSD, it's a little bit different. It's like manufactured. Absolutely. Yeah. So you have that edge where you can actually operate in fully out of integrity with LSD, <laughs> but you cannot do that with mushrooms. And I think that that's also another edge for um, people sometimes is that mushrooms forces you to look at the areas of your life where you are not in integrity with your soul. And mm -hmm. uh, you can totally navigate around that. <laughs> LSD yeah. Room. Yeah. No, it's like, um, it's kind of like um, boundaries which are set within the, the compounds, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't really push past them because those boundaries are already created within that compound. 
with yes. mushrooms, like that's our oldest ancestor, right? So mm-hmm. you think about like the beginning of like time and evolution. And again, I'm going to go back to like scholars because that's what I do on PPS. It's like talking about the beginning of like these um, ancestral medicines is that they hold information that is already within us. It just mm-hmm. unlocks it. LSD doesn't know how to unlock the information within us that it has been generationally like passed well, down to yeah, us. Exactly. It's, it's like a different kind of thing. Exactly. Not it's that. Not rooted in the Akash. It's a it's a newer insert in the Akashic records than mm-hmm. like our most ancient organic spore. Like the spore is like our most primordial cosmic root. Like, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so yeah, I just want to say before people start to like fade and like hop off, I have a gift for you guys, for everyone who's here. I have a special gift for you. And Francis, if you want to um, drop that link that I sent you, the Upbeat Mover link, if you want to drop that in the chat. I, uh, with my creative team, we created a brand new music video. It's a music visualizer for the first song on my EP, Her Isness. And it hasn't been seen by anybody yet. You guys will be the absolute first people besides my team of creatives to see this new video. And so I wanted to gift that to you. And so you follow the link, you just put your email in and your name and you will receive an email that will give you access to be the first to view the video. And you can just have access. You don't have to join my email list. You just get this gift. You can see the video. If you happen to join my list, then you also get the free download of Her Isness. So you get music and a music video and y'all get to see it first. So go ahead and fill that out and check it out. Cause then you can be like, I was the first person that I've seen it. Yeah, so I wanted to throw that out there before people start to fade. I know how these things go. So, <laughs> yes. Wow. Are there any other questions? Would anybody like to ask any questions? I know there's a lot of artists in this space, so I'm going to just reach to y'all directly. Anybody have questions about like your own personal creative process in psychedelics or like specific question for me with that? I'd be so happy to answer. I would... Um like to uh, speak to both what you and Siri were talking about in terms of uh, both masculinity and femininity. Um, I find one of my creative outlets is creating sacred space um, specifically for um, ritual, um, spiritual ritual, um, connecting with gods and goddesses. And it is primarily with mushrooms. partially because acid is just too damn long to be in a circle. Um, (laughs) But I've also, I I find it interesting that you find um, shrooms to be more feminine. I found them to be um, equally accessible to the masculine and the feminine Mm -hmm. um, and and use them as such. and and how I use them and the space that is that is created to use them is dependent on what we want the outcome of the circle or the the um work or working to be Mm -hmm. Um, and I find that um LSD I do find it to be I don't know masculine I didn't I wouldn't assign it myself necessarily a gender, although it would lend to masculinity more so in that it, I know that I get inspiration for specific projects or things to do Mm -hmm. um, under the influence of acid versus um, mushrooms. When under mushrooms, it's not projects and things to do, it's um, how to connect, how to express mm-hmm. um, love, connection, whatever that's going to be. LSD, um, there's a connection aspect to it, but it's less about heart to heart connection and more about mind connection. Yeah, yeah. 
And uh, I just, I just wanted to. Yeah, thank you for presencing that. I feel, I agree with you actually, as far as like what you were speaking to with the mushrooms. And I think feminine maybe isn't the best word or like, but I guess what I mean by that is like, that's why I kept returning to the word organic, like of the mm -hmm. earth, of the natural connectivity realms. And like inside of that is the, the utmost balance, right? The divine expression of that balanced space where our spirit really truly lives, where the soul lives. It's truly in Yeah. It's yeah, it's not really in that way. But with LSD, it's very logical, like logic analytic. Like that's kind of like what more I was alluding to, that side of us that is very precise in its like way of showing up in the physical realm. Like for example, like I like I do not do LSD often at all, like maybe once a year, just it not even sometimes I go years without doing it. I just don't find it to be um, a spiritual gate for me. But if I like when I was, for instance, first learning my um, digital audio workstation, I had just been gifted some LSD from a show that I played. And it was like kind of like my first like official rock star moment because you know if you play a show and somebody gives you lsd that's pretty rad so i was like okay this came to me and i like had this new digital audio, audio workstation to learn and so and i know that it puts me I'm, I'm very functional i'm a very high functional psychedelic human like people would never know and so i took one hit of this lsd and just sat down with that 12 hour portal so it sh and it stretches time too in this really beautiful way we can dive into stuff and I just like unlocked it and learned how to use it and really like laid the foundation for my understanding of that software and the hardware that went along with it um, through that through that lens. Whereas like I would not do that. I wouldn't even like feel attracted to my gear like that with the mushroom spirit. I would just want to like be with myself and maybe be more in my organic song space with like my instruments things like that. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for conversing on that, it's beautiful. Yeah, that was really well said, Trinity. I just wanna add um, what I, like the difference between again, the mushroom versus LSD in that, in, that, in that realm is that when you're figuring out systems, like it helps unlock that, right? Just like a phone's coated with electricity, right? Mm -hmm. Our brain's firing, Mm -hmm. in more neurons, in more pathways, depending on what medicine we're taking. And it connects us to those um, like mediums. And so that's the difference of like understanding how, like what you're saying, like I use that medicine to understand what I was getting out of it, right? And versus mushrooms where it's more, um, I would say biological, you know, mm -hmm. I am holistic. Um, versus LSD, it's more um, technical and um, system and logic based, but it's all information, right? Mm -hmm. So how we pull that information and how we use and digest that information is really important and how we understand each medicine and what we're getting out of it is, um, you know, part of the process. So I think that's actually a really good, like great point to bring up. Mm hmm yeah like it's that approach it's like for me um, and I feel very blessed to have this kind of mind because I started exploring these things when I was like 19 and I like went to my first rave and I was just like super stoked to be in this this vibe I was one of those kids like a 90s kid I literally like manifested that like my whole childhood I would like pretend to have raves alone in my bedroom I would go to the store and get like glow sticks and like crack them open and the dance parties. And I was like, one day I'm going to be old enough to go to a rave. And so <laughs> when I finally like made it to that alignment point on my journey, I was in college full time as like in studying dance, specifically majoring in dance making. I was in a professional dance company. I was already, I was doing an internship at a dance studio receiving private mentorship with that and producing my own solo work professionally in the city of Chicago. So I was very like busy young human. So I had a lot going on and um, that also tethered me. Plus I'm in this 
think tank, right? I'm going to school for dance making, which dance in and of itself, when you go that deep path with it is so psychedelic. Like you get so high and lost when you're studying gravity like that and how to flow your body through space, which is really what like when you study the contemporary dance arts, modern dance and like all of those type African dance and just these kinetic, like really big forms, you learn about your own centrifugal force in this way that's very psychedelic. So I had that mind on when I went into the realm. I was already analyzing and tracking my subtle body energy every day at school. So immediately, the first time that I experienced a psychedelic, I was like aware of what's happening with my actual internal systems. And I started tracking them and like noticing what was different and like, oh, this thing that I usually feel really blocked, this pathway of movement that usually feels really blocked is not open. How do I keep that open? What's different about um, my brain chemistry and the way my thoughts are treating me? (laughs) in this moment that is allowing me to have this space to be more free in my vessel and so that was really the the lens and the angle that I took into it and I would always be like how can I like I know that this is a gate to showing me something that I already have access to how do I keep it how do I keep the gate open even when this artificial portal closes and so yeah having that approach for anyone who is starting out young with it like don't think of it so casually. That's my like, I guess tip would be like to really give yourself the chance to look at it as an opportunity to get to know your potential better and like go for that potential in the other aspects of your life when you're not under the influence of the psychedelics to get yourself in a state where you're just embodied. Like for me right now at this point in my life, it's like, whether I'm under the influence of mushrooms or not, I'm just embodied at this point. It almost feels like the same space because all that it ever did was show me what I was capable of being, how I was capable of feeling, capable of perceiving. I feel like perhaps, can you guys hear me? Looks like, It looks almost like Amelia in the chat maybe has something that she wanted to ask here. Did you have a question, Amelia, related to? Um, Not really a question. I just was listening to people's experiences of the difference in creation process with LSD versus psilocybin and um, I study neuroscience and so one of the things that that made me think of was just like how how those two molecules work on the brain and that basically um, like psilocybin promotes creative processing in the sense that it's not like just using your serotonin it's tickling your serotonin receptors to activate them without it so that is kind of like a nerdy neurosciencey explanation of why people tend to feel more of that longer lasting create creative inspiration with psilocybin so not really a question I was just nerding out sorry if that was out of place no no I felt like it was really I mean if you're studying neuroscience I think that really awesome and cool to add to this conversation as as an artist trying to use an artist we're not scientists or I don't have yeah, kind of you know, to offer in that. It's really cool. Yes, thanks for sharing that language in, in this space. It's awesome. There's someone else with their hand raised. Jason? Uh, hello. Hello, everyone. Thanks for uh, having me. This has been uh, deeply fascinating. Um, uh, my question is, uh, well, I do LSA usually, which is, uh, I guess, basically uh, natural. I, uh, I guess for expression, what I would get into is just there's always this like block, this like shyness I need to overcome. Um, 
either externally or internally even when i'm alone i have to like sing for like maybe like a half hour just to get uh past all that um i don't know self-judgment or negativity and um i guess um i don't know there's only so much dancing and singing i could do i uh, i'm just looking for like uh, maybe a new pathway to connect with the universe or a new form of expression or self-expression um so I guess any links to that would be helpful. I don't know how else to explain it. Thank you. Yes, let me um, just kind of reflect back to you what I think I'm hearing. It's like you, you're having this kind of like process of opening up your expression and there's like areas you feel like there's judgment and blockages and it feels like um, the, the methods of creativity, the dancing and the singing isn't enough to move the energy. Is that what you're saying? Uh, uh, usually, yes. Okay, cool. My, like, immediately when you were speaking about this, it made me think of your solar plexus. And it's like, what is it that gets you excited and feels maybe slightly risky to create that actually materializes your expression? So like just the act of singing or the act of dancing without the um, vulnerability of sculpting and crafting it into a concise form of expression, an actual work of art, um, sometimes can make it feel very like loose and almost like amoebic to be in the creative space, which doesn't like um necessarily fully unlock break those those barriers of such self-judgment or feeling like you're not like good enough or expressed enough but it's when we are witnessed when we get to share that expression that feeling that medium that thought form in a concise way with people and be seen in it that really helps to overcome some of those um judgments because we have to move through so much of our own we have to move through those things, that judgment, that resistance, in order to even get the creation, the land, all the way into the physical. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah. Thank you. I'll look, I'll look more into that and uh, yeah. absorb yeah. that. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank I you. resonate with you 100% from bringing this up. And that's how I ended up with my client practice, which is artist development and um helping people embody their voices into their actual material, multidimensional expression and like the art that you make from that. Because I was a natural born dancer and it was very easy for me to express and create in that way, but singing was an edge for me. And when I stepped up into my voice, just the act of singing wasn't enough to break the blockage, to break the chains that were on my neck. I had to be seen in it and I had to like my soul called me to create and start to release music to get the message that it wants to share out into the world in a real way to really like um, midwife those creative babies in. And that's really what like melted all of that crazy gunk away from my system. So just think about that, you Thank know? Thank you. All right. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. That was a very powerful question. Thank you to everyone for all these uh, wonderful questions and, and incredible interaction, I feel like today. Um, I guess we're getting we're getting kind of close to the to the eight o'clock mark. I don't know if there's any any other final remarks you want to make, Trinetti. Um, anything else coming up for you that people should be on the lookout for? Um hmm. yeah, I mean. I don't know. I feel like we got into some deep spaces and I shared some nice pers perspectives with you. And really, like, if you're not already connected to my art, follow me at Trinetti Music on every platform or just go to Trinetti.com or look at my name on Spotify and just dive in and start to explore the sound because the sound holds a very powerful and potent space for you to hear yourself with or without anything in your system, it holds that space, that internal, inner temple, inner realm work kind of 
energy. And speaking of inner realm work, if you're interested in being guided in any way by me through um, to dive into your own soul files, your Akashic records, I do have only one single session offering at this point, and it's called inner realm work. And you can visit me at soulforresonance.com to learn more about that and learn how to connect and dive into the, your inner space and get the answers that you're looking for from you not need to go to somebody outside of you for that which is pretty cool i think so just yeah connect and there's tons more offerings that i have if you want that support developing your art around your voice you can connect to me with the solaris voice academy all of that is on the soulforresonance.com website and go check out that new music video that you got the link to. You'd be the first. You can be like, yeah, I saw that like before everybody else saw it. You could be that kid. Everybody wants to be that kid. It's been wonderful. Thank you, Trinetti. Yes, thanks for having me. Peace and blessings, y'all.